Polymers, macromolecules made from many repeating units, are highly important in our society, especially in the electronics industry. They are best known for their use as electrical insulators, however in the recent decades they have sparked great interest as, as conductors and semiconductors. Most polymers used in everyday life have structures similar to polyethene, a varyingly substituted sp3 hybridized carbon skeleton. However, conjugated polymers have a backbone chain of alternating double and single bonds, with overlapping p orbitals creating a system of delocalized electrons. The delocalized pi bonds suggest that electrons can move up and down the chain freely. However, this is not the case, as this is greatly hindered by columbic forces, leading to a very poor conductivity in the neutral form. In 1977 it was discovered that polyacetylene can be reacted with iodine, leading to a massive increase in conductivity. But to understand why it happens, we must first explore the mechanism called the band theory. It postulates that when molecules are in the solid state, the outer atomic bonding and the antibonding of molecular orbitals form two energy levels. The application of a potential raises some of the electrons into empty levels. Because of this, a positively charged hole is left in the valence band. Conductivity band electrons and the valence holes are free to move throughout the solid, thereby producing a current. The electrical properties of the material are determined by this band gap. To decrease it, polyacetylene is doped with iodine. The iodine is oxidized and an electron is removed from the valence band. This is called p-type doping. The product is a polaron, partially delocalized cation radical. Because of doping, the band gap lo is lowered as it creates a new band, making a pro electron promotion easier. Upon the application of potential to the chain, the electron hole pair is free to move like this. However, iodine doping leaves the polymer in equilibrium with the atmosphere and gaseous iodine is evolved from the polymer, making it not useful for practical applications as it reverts it back to the neutral state. For this work, Mr. Heger, McDermid and Sh Shirakawa were awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry. However, their research didn't stop there, and now conjugated polymers have found many applications. One of these is polymer light-emitting diodes, mostly employing the derivatives of polymer PPV. It can be manufactured relatively easily from readily available materials by step growth polymerization based on Heck or Whittaker couplings. This is one of the advantages against conventional LEDs, the substrate is much cheaper. This also opens up possibilities of adding substituents to the polymer, changing its properties. And as the emission of light is the energy given off upon the relaxation of an electron, the color of the emitted light can be changed by changing the band gap and therefore the energy of the photons. Substituents change the energy of the HOMO and LUMO, this is apparent as the unsubstituted PPV, can emit a yellow-greenish light. This changes to dark green and so on, as substituents are changed. These substituents also determine the stability and solubility of the polymer. This change in color is much more difficult to achieve with the conventional gallium LEDs. Conducting polymers can not only be used as the active layer in LEDs, but can also be used to create light reflecting displays on their own, like those used in ear readers. Unlike conventional side panel displays, these reflect light like real paper. This makes them more comfortable to read compared to the active display screens. These are so-called electrophoretic displays, using two electrodes and an electrochromic polymer layer in between. When a pixel is activated, the current is switched to reduce the polymer from the transparent oxidized form to an opaque reduced form. Most of the electrochromic polymers used are derived from polythiopene by adding substituents to the hetero ring. One of these derivatives is P-dot, one of the most studied color-changing polymers. It is deep purple in the reduced form, while in the oxidized form light gray, with light transmittance of around 70%. The lower reduction potential, the closer it is to zero, the less potential difference is required to reduce it to the opaque form meaning higher display sensitivity and the subsecond the switching times between the forms. These all qualities have been tailored by adding electron donating su substituents that change the band gap. However, copolymerization is also a useful tool in polymer design. For example, the main problem P dot suffers from is low solubility, making it difficult to form into films. 
This is fixed by a copolymerizing with it with a polymer called the PSS. If the protonated sulfonyl group turns the polymer into macromolecular salt, which can then be dispersed in water. This copolymer is what is actually used in the electronics industry. Because of the high conductivity and transparency, it is even starting to replace dwindling supplies of indium tin oxide, especially in solar cells. Polymer solar cells One of the most novel applications of conjugated polymers. Although they have much lower efficiency than the silicon solar cells, they are lightweight, inexpensive to fabricate, flexible, potentially disposable, and have less adverse environmental impact. Most of these solar cells are made from two electrodes in an active layer. The active layer is comprised from electro donor and the whole acceptor, mostly a fullerene derivative. When a photon hits the donor polymer, it excites an electron into the conductance band creating an electron hole pair seen before. Electrons are, are, and the holes are separated at the layer interface and directed to the electrodes to do work. The electron donor can be any of the whole variety of developed conjugated polymers, but most of them share the same structural elements. Most notably an electron pore and an electron rich motifs that create a partial charge on the backbone. It lowers the band gap, allowing the electrons to be promoted more easily. The easier they are to promote, the lower wavelengths of light are absorbed by the polymer. The absorption maximum of it should fall in this area, as to allow for high energy conversion efficiency. Progress in this area is highly evident. For example, in 2010, one of the highest efficiencies was almost 5.5%. Uh, while in 2014 the figure that fall had soared to almost 11. However, this is nowhere close to silicon cells uh, with figures rising uh, up to 30%. As we have seen, conjugated polymers have aided immensely in the recent development of electronics and opened up many possibilities for the future. They have also provided the means for greener and more sustainable energy production, among many other things not covered in this video. However, thanks for watching.